Okay, here we are in Ellis Road, Ellis Road in Glenfield at Select Autos with Steve Ward. I decided to come down and give him a bit of an interview today and find out what his opinion is on this whole rule. manufacturers and there's always hidden agendas and uh, like this latest admission thing is basically a deal with Greens it's you know and uh, but the ridiculous part about it is that um, it's not going to improve um, air quality if anything it's going to actually make it worse it'll make it worse for a while <coughs> definitely and you've only got to see what's happened with diesels they stopped basically diesels coming in with that regulation and everything supply and demand so what happened is the price went up yep it's definitely done that yep and uh, there's no supply um, now we're at the point where all these people are refurbishing old diesels um, which previously they would have been recycled and gone off and scrapped and replaced with another fresh import you know it's not benefiting anyone it's not benefiting the consumer it's um, it's all it's doing is uh, pushing prices up. 100 series Land Cruiser, great example. Someone said to me the other day, had a 100 series Land Cruiser for near six years, put 150,000 kilometres on it, got his money back. After six years, 150,000 k. Okay, on top of what it was when he purchased it. Now that's just wrong. When we're bringing in cars like this, it stands to reason that after a certain amount of years they depreciate in value, they move down to the next yeah. person, that next person uses them and eventually they go off our road. At, the, at this point in time it takes about 18 years for, for, for a new car to reach the end of its life. These cars are now not reaching the end of their lives, they're going all the way through and being refurbished and put back on the road and getting sold now for the same price as what they were purchased for. Yeah, which is what used to happen in the bad old days. This, this is a very, very flawed um, idea. No one's getting a benefit out of this at all. Right. So, so you've actually taken it upon yourself to go and sue, or start the proceedings to sue the government? Yes, yes, correct. We're prepared and we've had a QC look at it that I've used previously. And um, we haven't lost a case against the LTNZ in the past. I think and that's what you're probably most well known for in exactly, those circles. Exactly, and um, we've taken them to task many times on uh, basically statements of compliance, which was another nonsense that the LTNZ went along with. This particular law doesn't really affect me. I don't deal at that end of the market. You know, if you pan around and look at what's sitting here in the way of stock, uh, you know, I'm, I'm at the top end of the market and this doesn't affect me. But this is wrong. You know, the average family that buys a people mover, we'll call it, for, for, for want of a better word, yep. that everyone understands, the $10,000 people mover will be $20,000 if this rule comes into existence. The average family can't afford $20,000. The government's thinking is always usually flawed and these too many bureaucrats down there and they've got to have a, a reason to have a job. So they're always dreaming up schemes half the time that don't work, can't work, won't work, but they've got to do something because they're getting paid all this money. And, you know, personally I believe that we could do with a whole lot less bureaucrats, full stop, in all forms of government. Well, maybe and just let the real people get on yeah. with life and basically, you leave this alone, it'll sort itself out. There is quite a difference between the standards between Euro 2 and Euro 3 in admissions. The difference between Euro 3 and Euro 4 is so minuscule, it's, not, right. worth, it's not worth worrying about. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that up until recently, like everyone used to moan about dirty diesels, well they were dirty because we had dirty fuel, we had bad fuel, so they brought in this new regulation for the diesel vehicles when 75-80% of the problem had been cured when we actually got the fuel better. Now if you put these cars that we're putting through the system at the moment on 91, a big percentage of them won't pass 
because the fuel is so poor, so you're having to put a 95 in it to get it to meet the, uh, the actual uh, results that they want and will accept for it to be complied, right. to be then sold to, onto a consumer. Okay, so a popular misconception is <coughs> that 91 grade fuel is cleaner burning, more efficient than 95, and it's actually it's just rubbish. Use it for a lawnmower. That's about all it's good for. And in the end of the day, it's just a substandard fuel. That it's we've been a substandard sold. fuel that we've been sold. We were we were uh, suckered with um, when they changed from leaded to unleaded. That was another big farce. Uh, most of the cars that were here at the time didn't have ca Cadillac converters. That was also very dangerous. We polluted the atmosphere. Something shocking by putting unleaded fuel into cars with no Cadillac converter. And you know, that was another absolute joke. But here's another classic example of the old TNZ meddling with something they really don't know what they're doing. And, and they get it wrong, and they're getting it wrong here. They've got it wrong with so many other things. They should get out of this. They should just leave it alone. Let the market take control of what they want to buy. People are not stupid. They'll buy as late a model car as their dollar will allow them to. Yep and uh, we could save the taxpayer a whole lot of money by getting rid of half these bureaucrats. And of course you've got the manufacturers pouring the fuel on the fire for all of this. Yep. They, don't, they don't want cheap import cars. They want the landed cost of a car to be as high as possible. So, so they, they can raise their margins. So they can raise, raise their margins on their new. Okay, so just to recap, this is just one man here in New Zealand working by himself to try and help every single one of us in New Zealand save what should be rightfully ours, and that's a cheap access to quality, low kilometre cars that are safe to be on the roads. And if this government comes along and introduces this rule, which is ineffective, in a word, then we're all going to lose out. We've got to say thanks to people like this that are going out there and trying to change government uh, policy because it's fundamentally wrong. The other thing is though that we've got to look back and the problem is that this government didn't actually bring in the stupid rule. No, it was the Labour government. It was a Labour government, but well, which has been done within part with Greens. It's This yep. is MMP at its worst. Yep. And uh, But the very, very negative about this is that the National Party said if they got in they would look at sorting this out. Because now they've got in and they don't want to. I can't be bothered looking at it. And They're probably worried about losing the green vote, but if the Greenies actually went and looked at the proper statistics on this, they would realise that they're actually making our air quality a lot worse by imp implementing this rule. Correct, and the problem is though, a lot of these people are just not technical. And if, if you get someone put enough spin on something, you can always make something look how you want it to look by just twisting things. How much longer do we, as a public, sitting here in New Zealand, have to take this from the people that we elect? We should be able to turn around and say to them, this isn't right, we don't want you to do it, stop doing it. This is what this petition is about, stop doing it. Steve, just one, one thanks very much for coming along. Yeah, Steve, it's been not a time. problem. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah, don't do it, guys. Wake up. You know, you sh you're, you're supposed to be a little bit brighter than this, and, um, and I think you've got to look at the big picture and uh, you know, eventually leave this alone, it'll take care of itself. It won't be too far away that these cars will be Euro 4 and Euro 5, but at the moment if you carry through with this, you'll take out 70-80% of what's coming in. That, that will have huge effects. Not only on jobs, <clears throat> but also on the price of cars. cars, and it will affect every single one of us. We enjoy our 7 to 10 grand cars very much at the moment. It's wrong, wrong, wrong. Don't do it. Don't let them do it. Go and sign the petition. Thanks again, Steve. Yep. Really, really Cheers. appreciate it.